Good morning, YouTube. <laughs> Welcome to the studio. Happy Monday, everybody. I am live here on, on the YouTube to be later emailed and posted to our current students who are taking classes here at Orange Diesel. This is a Monday morning routine for us. This is where we talk about everything that is happening in the studio this week in all the different classes across the board for our parents that are like, I drop them off every week, but I don't know what we do. So this is my chance to, to drink coffee. It's getting cold and go over everything we have going on. I have lots of visual aids for us this morning. So I'm gonna, let's, let's you know, let's rock it out, right? Second week of January. So let's start with multimedia. How's that sound? Should we do that? All right, I'm gonna twitch something here on my screen really quick. Bear with me, cause I wasn't as ready as I <laughs> thought I was. <laughs> Here, I spent all this time, you guys, getting all the different examples together, and I forgot to have this ready. Okay, now I'm ready. Here we go. Okay, multimedia classes. So we've got K-1s, second thirds, fourth fifths, middle school, high schools, all doing multimedia. Now, if you haven't heard of multimedia classes and you're like, what does that even mean, Allison? It just means that every month they do something different. They might start one month in acrylics, which is what we're doing now, and then next month they're going to go to printmaking. And then the next month, they're going to go to mixed media. And then the next month, they're going to go to fiber arts. And the next month, they're going to go to metals. Um, and that's our spring semester. In the fall semester, we did chalk pastels, oil pastels, ink, clay, and watercolor. So multimedia just means that we're doing a little bit of everything. Okay. Um, so it is acrylic month for our kids. And um, I've got our K1s and second thirds. Normally, I go in grade order. I've got them out on the tables, and I'm going to have to unhook the camera in order to show you what they're working on. So before I do that, let's talk about the fourth and fifths and uh, middle school, high schools, because I've got those right here, right? So they are going to be working on pet portraits or animal portraits throughout the whole month of January. Last week, they, which was the first week of classes, we spent time talking about what a portrait is, shoulders, neck, head, up. Um, we started brainstorming what our animal might be, whether it's the dog that we love that is at home with us or whether we just love sloths and we want to paint a sloth. So we chose what our animal was going to be. We worked through what compositions were. Our kids who picked animals that were not pets at home, um, a lot of them went ahead and printed out kind of reference pictures. So we've got those ready for them to go. We've got um, those kids that are doing like Fluffy, who lives at home, will be bringing a picture of Fluffy to work from because we do want to work from photograph. Um, and then they spend some time learning about color. Right? When we do our pet portraits, we can have two directions that they can go in. They can go super realistic and they can, they can look at this picture of their animal, which is in this case a white dog, and realize that it's not white. We really look at this, it is grays and pinks and purples and light blues and greens. Yeah, there are warm whites and cool whites and shadowy whites. And so all of those colors need to happen on the canvas. Um, they can also go in the style of like Franz Marx, abstract expressionism and do crazy colored animal portraits. Okay, so they're not limited to making it realistic, although we found in the past that most of our kids prefer that. So we do give them the option. Either way, we have to work with color. And so last week, they spent time filling out a color wheel. So this is our little color wheel um, sheet. I don't know if it's backwards. It's upside down, that's for sure. I don't know if it's backwards on um, YouTube, if it's just backwards on my camera. But um, we've got the primaries, the secondaries, the tertiary colors, and tints and shades that go along with them. They kept these color wheels here in the studio because that way they can reference it from here on out while they're doing their mixing uh, because they will need tints, they will need shades, they will need complementary colors in order to make their painting pop, regardless of whether they're going realistic or they're going more abstract, okay? This week, we're breaking out the canvases and this is the size of canvas that our fourth and fifth and middle school high schoolers are going to be working on. It is an 11 by 14 canvas. Most of our kids will work in a portrait orientation since we are doing portraits and they will spend their first part of class drawing lightly with a pencil in order to get the scale and proportions of their animal onto their canvas. That way they can start with all of the painting process. Okay, so that's the objective and kind of the goals for this week 
is to get whatever animal they're doing <laughs> drawn out on the canvas and we're starting painting. So they'll start blocking in color, probably starting with the background and then moving into the animal. So plans for this week. Reminders to our parents in multimedia classes, wear old clothes this week and for the rest of the month because acrylic paint does not come out of your clothes. Now, let's talk about those kindergartners, first graders, second graders, and third graders. They are working big, 18 by 24 sheets of paper. They're out on my table over there. And they did their first layer of paint on their, on their pictures. They're doing abstract paintings, which is super fun and a way for them to explore color and pattern and texture that doesn't stress them out that it has to be something. So I'm going to take you with me on a little journey. And we're going to go look at some of um, the paintings that are over here. You ready? Here we go. I've got my camera. It actually detaches. So we're going to spin it around. And y'all are coming with me. Whoops. Retangled. Just a sec. There we go. So you can see how big they are. These are, for instance, this is this is one. I'm sorry for the shakiness. I drank a lot of coffee this morning. This is one of the paintings from last week. They used a um, gift card or a credit card or a hotel key to do their painting. This was kind of the red zone. So you see all the different colors that are in here. There's yellows and fuchsias and magentas. It was kind of like putting paint on with a giant palette knife. Um, here's another one. Look at that pretty, I don't know, Hobby Lobby calls it rouge, but it's, it's not rouge. All right, let's come over here and let's see. We got different color palettes going on over here. So this was the first layer of paint. You can see kind of the texture that happens. It is a heavy body acrylic. And so it does have some kind of a raised texture to it. Um, next week or this week, and then in the following week, so let me go put this back. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hang on, bear with me. Hopefully it doesn't cut off my head here. Let's see. Oh, that was pretty good. That was pretty seamless. So this week, let me change that just a little. There we go. This week, they're going to take that same painting and they're going to work on it again and then again and then again until the fourth week of January and then they'll take them home. Um, we started big. We got it covered. This week, they're going to learn about organic shapes and they're going to use um, big paint brushes and big tools to get big areas of color. You'll still see the, the, the color underneath it. It's not like we want to cover it all up. But that color, this first layer here, is probably the, the least impactful color that you will see when they are all done. Um, so they'll get um, a big color field or organic shapes painted on there this week. And then next week, they'll go on to um, texture tools and mark making tools. And then in the final week, we even go with teeny tiny brushes. Think, think um, November's end tangles with black and white, and they'll add even more details to their picture. So um, it is a non-representational um, product that we're looking for here. Just a lot of shapes and colors and emotions. So um, we've always been really, really pleased with this, with this project. The kindergartners, the first graders, second graders, and third graders love it. It is, it is a really fun way to explore paint. So that is coming this month. Want to talk about drawing? I told you I was going to bring drawing examples. So I did. So drawing classes for our um, 101 and 102s last week, they worked on value scales. And I thought I'd show you kind of the difference between the two classes, okay? So the, the plan here of value, those of you who don't know, is light or dark. When we talk about color, we're talking about hue. When we talk about lights and darks, we're talking about value. Um, and so, whoops, part of what we need to do first is train our eyeballs to even see value. And then we need to train our hands to render it appropriately with the tools that we're using. So this one... They use charcoal, which is actually kind of tricky to control where we want it to go and to control the, the, the heaviness of it because charcoal can get real heavy real fast. So this right here, this is, this is one of our tools. We actually have a whole bunch of these really great foam um, geometric shapes. Now, I've got a lot of light going on in here. I've got my windows over here because I'm doing a video, right? My windows over here. I got my light here. I got my light above because I want to be well lit for a video. When we do this in class, we pick one source. We try to get one light source because then that tells, like, then that will give me a light side and a dark side, right? Right now, when you're looking at this, this whole thing is white. So um, not a good example. I guess right here is a little bit lighter, right? Right here is a little bit darker right here. And then there's a highlight as you go this way. And then it gets lighter as it goes this way. Yeah, that's value. So just seeing the value is the first step. And then we got to render it. So our kids this last week, I got all these shapes, you guys tons of them. 
right? Our kids this last week used the sphere mostly and charcoal. And 101's classes made a value scale. So this is a sliding value scale. We make kind of a five um, boxes and the goal is to get it to be a gradient. You can see with charcoal, it's really hard to get it light, right? So it went from white, which is just pure paper, the number one, to number two, which is supposed to be barely, barely, barely dark. It's really hard to do in charcoal. Um, and then they try to like look at this and decide where are the ones, where are the twos, where are the threes, the midtones, where is the darkest, darkest, dark? There's the five. Look, I love this person. This is 101. Look how they notice that there's a highlight. There's a highlight before the shadow. That's awesome. Those are the types of things that make me excited. Um, our 102s, you can see they do a little bit better um, job controlling it. They're older. They've got more experience. This isn't the first time they've done it, but we still have some struggle getting the, the number two the value. So um, still stuff to work on here. Charcoal is a tricky thing to do. I guarantee you if I had given these artists, especially 102s, if I had given them pencils, they would have. this would have been like, this is so easy, Allison. Um, but this gives us also a, a language to use. So when we're doing projects seven weeks from now and we're doing drawings, we can say, I feel like you don't have any twos in your picture. Uh, I feel like you're missing the fours. You know, where's the, the lighter shadows? Where's your, you know, you've really only got twos and fives. Like, where's the threes? Um, and so it gives us kind of a way to, to talk to our kids about maybe their drawings and what they need to add or remove from their picture. So these are some of the 102s as they were drawing their, their sphere and their value scale. Um, I did love some of our 102s. Let me see if I can find one. They even... They did it in reverse. So they used black paper and then they put white to do the same value scale, which is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So that's that was our 102 um, advanced realistic drawing class last week. Now this week, I got to make sure I turn these. Actually, I had, you know what? The trickiest thing to do is to make sure I get everybody back in the right cubby. All right. So this week they're going to be working, continuing on still life and values, um, but something a lot more complex. So our 101s will build a still life using some of our wooden blocks, not the white ones, but just our, our plain old wooden blocks. They'll build their own still life and then they'll draw it and put in their values on that still life. Um, just more of an exercise in that. Our 102s, let's see. Oh, hang on. I got this. <laughs> this is the part I didn't, I didn't do my homework. Normally I write my post-it notes, you guys. But this time I did not. So now I'm I'm looking it up as I'm talking to you. I did all the homework of pulling everybody's stuff. So in 102s are doing the same thing um, where they'll build a, a still life and then they'll they'll focus on their value scales. I'm pretty sure they're going to give them a choice between pencil and charcoal. And I guarantee you most of our kids will choose graphite. So the pencil. All right. 102 comic drawing. Last week they worked on chibi, which is always like... It's one of the most popular lessons they do. So it's the cutesy little animals that you see. Um, I did pull a couple examples for you. Um, so let me make sure I go back to my screen here. Come on. Sorry. Ah. So these are these cute little chibi animals that they worked on. It is a style of drawing. Right. Miss Michaela out at Flatwoods told me that the kids loved chibi. So uh, some of our kids added color. Some of them stayed black and white. Um, but they worked on some chibi animal characters because this week they're going to take those characters and they're going to turn them into a comic strip. So we're looking for them to start telling a story with their characters. Remember, the end goal for this semester is that they have a comic that they're working on, an actual story. We've been working a lot for the last semester just on skills and drawing skills. We need to put it all together. So that's what's, that's what's coming. All right. So those are my drawing classes, my sewing classes. I don't have anything to show you. Um, next week, I will have that because they will have penguins that are started. This last week, they spent time just getting familiar with machines, learning all the names of the machines. What are feed dogs? What is the bobbin casing? What is, so all of those terms we had to get out there. Um, you know, what is the presser foot? So when I give you a verbal instruction or Miss Liz gives you a verbal instruction, lower your presser foot, you know what I'm talking about. So. So we worked on all of that. They did some driving of their machines on paper because that helps us to follow the lines. Um, and then they talked about their projects. So this week they're going to get started on those cute little plushy penguin stuffies. And next week I will have some cute little penguins to show you, at least in progress. Okay. 
All right. Fundamentals classes. This is our preschool program. Remember, it is January. It is light, dark, and Van Gogh month. And so they did where the wild things are. This week, we are reading Freight Train. And we are reading it in Spanish as well, at least here in Liberty, because that's one of my favorites. So we're reading Tren de Garga. And we're going to read this book. I love it because it has a landscape in it. So we, And this has a little bit of light and dark, which remember, that's one of our themes, right? So we've got our, our light and our dark, right? Andando en la oscuridad. And we've got also a really great representation of landscape. So horizon lines and all sorts of things. So they're going to be working on um, making their own freight train. This is one of my favorite projects that we do. They'll actually use sponges cut in certain shapes so that they can, you know, stamp or build their own train on their landscape. So that's what the kids are doing. And then, of course, there'll still be the black light room for them. This will be the last, I think, maybe. No, we might do black light the third week. Um, I can't remember if that's written in the curriculum or not, but they'll do the black light room again this week for sure. And then next week, the black light, the black, the dark that we do is done in the large classroom. So we'll black out the large classroom next week for flashlight, which is fun. We do a book called flashlight and all of our art is done by flashlight. So, all right. Um, I feel like that's it. And I didn't really bring any notes uh, because like I said, I didn't do my post-its. Let me drink my coffee and think if there's anything else I need to tell you. I did the special events page on the website. So that is updated for those of you who um, are interested. Spring break camps are up there. There's some really good ones. So if anyone's, your kids have ever been here in the studio and they've been like, who painted that wall with the spray paint? And they're like, can we do that? They're going to want to come for spring break because we've got graffiti camp again. So both studios will be doing graffiti camp with the spray paint. Um, Liberty's doing a sewing camp. So for those of you who that um, didn't get into sewing class and have been wanting to, we'll have a day of sewing on the machines. Very, very few spots in there, remember, because we only have four machines. So there's only 10 spots in that camp if you want it. Registration will open, I think I put February 1st. And then um, Platwoods is doing... Oh, a sweet treats camp, because that's always popular. So a lot of polymer clay, because polymer clay is big right now. So that's what's going on. Um, there's also like Mother's Day is on there and Easter is on there. Those are really the only ones. There's also the art show, which will be coming up in, in April. So we have lots of time before this, this semester art show. Um, but, but it is up there on the calendar for those of you who want to go ahead and put it on your calendar. So that's under special events on the website. I think that's it. If you guys need anything from me, you can always reach out. Again, the best way to reach me is via email or via social media. Um, the phone is typically muted. It is muted right now because I taught this morning on Zoom, and now I'm live here on YouTube, and then I will be live on Facebook for our Creation Nation. And then, so it is, is often muted when we're here talking to our, our virtual community. So if you leave me a message, I call you back. But the best way to reach me is always via email or, <laughs> or social. Um, as a reminder for makeups, you guys, if you're missing classes, do try to get in for a makeup if you can. If you can't, we'll catch you up in class. We'll do our very best. Um, if you don't know if you need a makeup, just ask us and we can we can look it up. Um, a lot of times we try to get you caught up in the class. So if it's been three weeks and you're like, we need to do that class and you're like in multimedia, um, we may have already caught you up over the course of the three weeks that that, you know, that has been since you missed it. Um, so you may not need one. Check with your instructor. My drawing classes, the lessons are all kind of individual. I mean, they may build on each other a little bit, but you can still come and make up that lesson. So by all means, sign up and come do a makeup so that we can get you that 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 practice time more than anything else, because nothing will make you a better drawer more than practice. Yeah. All right. That's all I got for everybody. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday. Uh, thanks for joining me for coffee. Let me know if you need anything and I will see you in the studio soon.